Bobby Shoemaker, Andrew Calvano, Tournament Talk, Tournament Edge, Monday, December 26th. We're covering Santa Anita Race 7. Andrew, it's the Grade 1 La Brea, seven furlongs on the dirt for three-year-old fillies. Only a field of eight, but a very solid field of eight. Light stream, the two horses, your two-to-one morning line favorite. It's Lynch, it's Leperu. We've talked about this horse before on the show, Andrew, and the horse proved me wrong last time out from a very wide post draw. Uh, on October 22nd at Keeneland from the 12th hole, excuse me. I don't like this horse. This horse doesn't want to switch leads. This horse is a prisoner to pace. Um, I think the horse really tro- showed its true colors August 6th when it had no reason to lose and lost to Paola Queen at 2-1. to one. I don't even think this horse is the second best horse in this field. If that horse wins, tip of the cap, you can have him. And I agree with you, Bob, 100%. And out of the two short price uh, horses here, Finley's Lucky Charm was 5-2, and, and Lightstream 2-1. to one. I thought for sure Finley's Lucky Charm would be the 9-5 to five favorite, so a um, little eye-popping to see this one being the second choice. Uh, and, and Lightstream, I, you know, I will say, this is a very nice filly, but Bob, like you said, you know, she had all the opportunity on August 6th. I was there that day. I mean, that horse should have won easy. That was my single that day. The Raven run, I think she just really got the best of that wide trip. I mean, this horse was in the seventh path. Uh, you know, I mean, hats off too. But now, coming off a layoff, not sure how this one really liked that. Little confused as to why Brian Lynch comes here rather than ship the Gulfstream Park where he is based out of now. So, not really sure why we're here. Um, but I really don't think this one's going to get the best of the pace set up. And I think that's what's going to come down with Hunter. I mean, this one's coming from the clouds today. And, you know, Santa Anita, where you kind of want to be on the front end regardless. I just don't think it's going to work out for this one whatsoever. So a two to one, a big, big play. And so they definitely don't think this one, I think, if anything, this one's a second choice favorite. But Finley's Lucky Charm's a horse to look out for you. Yeah, I'm not going to try to get cute here, Andrew. I'll just get to my pick and we can move on. I, I think Finley's Lucky Charm is a freak. And I think this horse is the fastest horse in this race. And I think this horse is going to get the lead by herself and she's going to wire this field. And here's why I think that. She's going from six furlongs to seven furlongs, and she's already been running extremely fast at Churchill Downs. So obviously, common logic would say the move from six to seven, she's going to even get faster from a numbers perspective. And here's something else I'll mention. She's three for three after a 222-day layoff when she has absolutely positively crushed her competition, and she's done it from gate to wire at a place called Churchill Downs with one of the longest stretches in the United States when it comes to horse racing, racetracks. And when you're winning races like that at that place, when I think it favors closers, you are certainly doing something right. This horse has got a very, very bright future, and I think it starts on Monday. Again, I try to be favorites in every race, and this horse probably is going to end up going off the favorite, and deservedly so. She's very good, Andrew, and I think she just goes gate to wire at a short price. And I'm, I'm on the same horse as you, Bob. Finley's lucky charm for me. At 5-2, I honestly think that's a gift and warrants a big window bet, in my opinion. Um, not to get too cute, you know, I, I like the 8 perfect pick. Uh, I think this one has, you know, tactical speed and can sit right under. That's going to be a horse that's round out of close trifecta. But to go back on you with Finley's lucky charm here, um, you know, a 94 buyer, 96 buyer, 102 buyer. You know, since that long layoff, as you mentioned, Bob, and at Churchill Downs, nonetheless, you know, we're not talking about one of these quirky racetracks, whether you know, it's a horse coming from low south, it's all hype. I mean, you're talking about one of the best racetracks in the country. What um, This one's drawing off by seven and a quarter lengths, five lengths, eight and a half. I mean, this one really is a freak show, Bob, and I really think our true colors are going to come out on Monday, as you mentioned. I think this is a perfect ship opportunity. I don't think Brett Calhoun comes out here for any other reason. He could have stayed anywhere he wanted in the Midwest, but he comes all the way out here knowing this horse has an opportunity. So at five to two, I'm on Finley's Lucky Charm. I understand this horse probably will get bet down, but I think this horse is just head and shoulders above the rest of the group. For me, Andrew, if you're, if you're to the listeners out there, or the viewers rather, if you want to protect and you don't want to take a short price in tournaments, I understand it. I would take a long look at Lunar Express. And the only reason I say that is if the five, which again, to me, doesn't look to be fast enough on paper, even though I think she wants to lead, if the five can somehow, some way, keep up with the three and, and run the three and herself into submission, then something's certainly going to come off from off of it, and that could be the one. I mean, another Baltus horse. You mentioned Arroyo uh, in the last segment when we were covering Santa Anita race six. 
Um, this horse may set a great trip if something runs with the three. But again, Andrew, I can't stress enough. There's other horses in here that want the lead, but they can want it all they want. I just don't think they're capable of getting the lead. Yeah, and I'm actually agreeing. I, I actually missed out on that point. You're, look at this. If you watch this one's replay, the gate speed is just out of this world. I mean, this one doesn't miss a beat. This one goes, and she's off. She, she's right off by, by a length or two right from the very beginning, um, you know, so, securing her place on the inside. I mean, you look at other horses who have shown speed, you know, uh, Constellation, um, and I've watched a couple of the fives replays, and Noah Gray as well. If they're very, very hurried out of the, out of the gate, this horse just goes and gets it herself. So I think that's a big, big factor of this early pace right here. One to ask you about Anola's Gray. Anola Gray. I mean, she she burst onto the scene with one of the better performances uh, that I had seen in 2016 on April 10th. I mean, I, she was just a few ticks off the track record. Uh, you know, in her first start of her career, she got a 111 time form U.S. Speed figure. Not sure what you're looking at from a buyer standpoint, but uh, certainly the sky at that point looked to be the limit. And I think she's come back down to earth a little bit, Andrew. She's lost two of her last three. The only win she's gotten in the last three starts was going down the hill on the turf. Um, obviously, Diamato is one of the best trainers in the country. He puts Mike Smith aboard. I just, I think she's come back down to earth, Andrew. I just don't think she's good enough for this group, especially the horses that we've mentioned. Your thoughts on Anola Gray? Yes, this one's very intriguing to me. Um, really want to know what this one's going to wind up doing because this one, you know, really has taken command of races right from the early jump. But I don't think she'll have the opportunity to do that today uh, with Finley's lucky charm. So curious to know where this one will sit early on. Uh, but you know, Mike Smith does win big races and keep that in mind. So an overlay here, especially if we get bet down, I may end up here. Um, but uh, Bob, to answer the question, that being especially at a hundred uh, buyer. In the 16, um, 16 and, a, and a quarter length uh, crushing victory. Uh, but I'm just curious to know where this one will sit, I guess, is my only thing about this horse. Sure. And give us your top selection one more time. So I'm going to be on Finley's Lucky Charm here at 5 and 2. Paramutually, I'll try to slide the 8 perfect pick in to close the exact. I'm on Finley's Lucky Charm as well, ladies and gents. I just think she's so much the horse to be. But if you want to protect, because I think at the end of the day, this three horse is going to be probably the favorite. If you want to protect, I say you go with the one horse. And hope for a pace meltdown for three wins a race. Probably no harm, no foul. So that's going to do it for Santa Anita Race 7 on Monday, December 26th. It's the Grade 1 La Brea. That's Andrew Calvano. I'm Bobby Shoemaker. Good luck. Good luck, guys.